Hello there. Welcome to Reading Through the Bible with Elder Linda. So glad that you joined me uh, here in Reading Through the Bible on this channel. We read the Bible together. Um, then we make sure we understand the context. And then we make application to our lives. So uh, I post a new video every Wednesday. Um, sometimes it's up as late as Tuesday night to make sure it's there and up and running by Wednesday morning. Uh, but there's a new video every Wednesday. And it's kind of like just an old-fashioned video good old-fashioned Bible said where we're just studying the Word of God. Amen. So, like I said, glad you're joining me. Give me a thumb up. Subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. But uh, last week, we talked about, we were in chapter 21. And in chapter 21, we talked about the birth of Isaac. We talked about uh, Ishmael and Hagar, how they were sent away. And we talked about the covenant that Abraham and Abimelech made, made with each other. Um you know, because Abraham didn't want Abimelech to uh, to harm him or his people. While Abraham's actually living in Abimelech's country, in the Philistine country. So they made a covenant that they were going to be true to each other. And then we discussed uh, the deeper meaning of Hagar and Sarah. Uh, because Hagar and Sarah was more than just Abraham's um, wife and his, uh, and you know, the concubine. But they represented the flesh and the spirit. Sarah representing the spirit. Um... Hagar representing the flesh and how God wants us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Uh, so we talked all about that. So go back and review it if you didn't get a chance to see to uh, listen to that lesson from last week. But this week we're going to be reading chapter 22. And we're going to talk about how Abraham's faith is going to be tested. And you want to hear this because this is something uh, that we haven't heard God do. But he actually is going to ask Abraham to do something that just seemed to be just mouth dropping. Like oh, he asked him to do what? Uh, and we're also going to uh, read about how obedient, talk about how obedient Abraham was, you know, to God's request, to everything God asked him to do. And we're going to talk about how God has some requests for us and apply that to our life, how we also need to make some sacrifices. Amen. Amen. So let's just start a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, O oh God. We appreciate you. We honor you today, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would come in and be the teacher on today. Show us those things that we've not seen, Lord God. And we ask you to bless everyone that has tuned into this channel, Lord God. Give them what they need on today. We give you all the praise, honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So let's start with... Um, we're going to start with chapter 22 and i'm reading the new living translation genesis chapter 22 and it reads in verse one it says sometime later god tested abraham's faith abraham god called yes he replied here i am Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. The next morning, look how fast Abraham moved and did what God told him to do. The very next morning, Abraham got up early. And he saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood for a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place God had told him about. Verse 4. On the third day of their journey, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told his servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked, to, walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We have the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, 
Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Verse 10. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. At that moment, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here am I. Don't lay a hand on the boy, the angel said. Do not hurt him in any way. For now I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yireh, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Verse 15, the name of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars of the sky and the sand of the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me. Verse 19, then they returned to the servants and traveled back to Beersheba, where Abraham continued to live. Soon after this, Abraham heard that Milcah, his brother Nahor's wife, had borne Nahor eight sons. The oldest was named Uz, the next oldest was Buzz, followed by Kimuel, the ancestor of the Ara Arameans, Keys, Hazel, Pildash, Jilda, and Bethuel. Now Bethuel became the father of Rebekah. Take note of that, but we're going to see this name again. Bethuel is the father of Rebekah. In addition to these eight sons from Milcah, Nahor had four other children from his concubine, Ruma. Their names were Teba, Gaham, Tahash, and Maka. Amen. So, very interesting chapter. Let's get into it and see what the Lord is going to show us in this chapter. Bring some things out that I jotted down that I wanted to remember. So when we read in verse 1 and 2, it said that God spoke directly to Abraham to sacrifice his son. God spoke to Abraham. God still speaks today. We need to be in tune to listen to his voice. Just like he spoke to Abraham, he speaks to us. And we talked about that some chapters back, how God can speak to us through many ways, through uh, messages through our uh, our pastor or through a book we're reading or uh, even in dreams and visions. God speaks to us through songs. So if we're listening in tune, God will speak to us. So just remember, God's still speaking today. But God spoke directly to Abraham and told him to sacrifice his son. In verse 2, God refers to Isaac, which was interesting, as his only son. Verse 2, he said, uh, take your son, your only son. Yes, Isaac. And how many people know, we know Abraham has another son. Ishmael is also Abraham's son. But why do you think God said, take now your only son? Now, it's, it's I'm of the opinion that uh, the reason why God called Isaac his only son, because that was the only son that God had ordained and God had promised to Abraham. Isaac was the promised son. And it's through Isaac that the nation of Israel is going to come forth. It's through Isaac is going to be an ancestor of Jesus. So this is the family line that Jesus is going to come from. So he looked at him as being the only son. That's the significant son. He knew he had another son, but he called Isaac his only son. Verse 3 said, note that Abraham did not question God. So when God told him to take your son, your only son, and, and offer him up, Abraham didn't even question God, you know, which speaks again of the faith of Father Abraham. You know, I, and let's be honest, if it had been you or I, uh, God, you want me to do what? You, you want me to do, 
I'm that's just a demon spirit talking to me. That cannot be God telling me to do no craziness like that. You know, we would really probably have a lot more to say than Abraham. So God knew who to choose to, to do this. And uh, Abraham had complete faith and trust in God. And and perhaps at this point, Abraham knows that, okay, God gave me Isaac. This is a miracle child in the first place. I only have him because God opened up Sarah's womb and he caused us to be able to have a child. So he know Isaac was given to him by God. And, and maybe in his mind, He's got so much faith to know that if God tells me to sacrifice Isaac, then he must have a plan. He must gonna be gonna resurrect Isaac right after I sacrifice him. And he, you know, he must have had some kind of thinking in his mind knowing that I trust God. I don't care. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but if God said it, I'm gonna do it. In verse five, it says, Abraham had such confidence in God that he even told his servants, stay here. We are going to worship and we will be right back. So even Abraham, you know, knew that he didn't know how God was going to provide or what God was going to do. But by going here, he told his servant, just wait for us. We're going to come back. We'll be back. So he knew God was going to do something. Part of our worship, and I saw this when I was reading this, that part of our worship to God is our simple obedience to what he tells us to do. I know we, we usually think of worship as just, oh, praise the Lord. You know, we singing or we clapping our hands. Okay, that's a, that is all part of worship, the sacrifice of praise that we bring to the Lord. But I want you to look at worship as a deeper thing than that. You're worshiping God. You're honoring God when you're doing what he told you to do. It's a blessing to him. It's a praise to him. It's a sweet aroma to him when he look, can look down and see my son, my daughter is doing just what I told them to do. And, and it's a sacrifice. In verse uh, six. So I just remember that obedience is, is, is and there's also a scripture that says obedience is better than sacrifice. So we want to bring the sacrifice of praise. We also just want to worship God in our obedience. In verse six, according to the Nelson Study Bible, the fire would have been carried in, in the form of live coals in a clay pot. And when I saw this, um, but when I first read, I just thought of, okay, he just carrying coals in a, in a pot so that he can light the fire when he get to wherever he was going. But then God showed me something different that we also carry fire shut up in our bones when we're doing what God told us to do. Abraham was on fire. We have, you have a fire of God when you know that you're doing what God told you to do. There's like a, 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 a burning, a zeal, a zest, an excitement in your, in your whole being when you know you're doing what God told you to do. Like fire shut up in his bones. Verse 7 and 8 says, when, even when his son inquired about the sacrifice, Abraham assured his son that God would provide a sheep for the offering. So listen to this faith coming through. Not only did faith, uh, Abraham process his faith in his own mind as he was walking, it was as good as done. God told him to sacrifice his son. The moment God said it, Isaac was already sacrificed in Abraham's mind. He's already, is already done. It's just walking out and carrying out, just doing, going to the place where God wanted me to do it. He had already decided, I'm going to do what God told me to do. So he assured his son, don't worry about it. God is going to provide. So look at the faith of Abraham. Verse nine says, as he laid Isaac on the wood, one has to wonder what was going through Isaac's mind. Now we know Abraham, what was going through his mind. What was going through Isaac's mind? Was Isaac starting to get worried when his dad is laying him on the wood? And keep in mind, Isaac is not a little bitty old kid. He's not like uh, three or four years old. Isaac is uh, from, from some of the people, nobody knows the exact age he was, but from um, the, some of the commentaries say he had to be a teenager or a young man. So he could have fought off his dad and kept him from offering him. But he submitted to his dad and he let his dad put him on the altar. Uh, so did Isaac feel about Abraham like Abraham felt about God? Was Isaac have so much faith in his father, Abraham, that he trusted his father no matter what? To the point of, okay, well, dad said me to lay here on the altar, then it must be a plan. Just faith. So even the faith of Isaac to trust his dad, you know, to not fight him off, say, hey, I'm not getting on this. I'm not, you're not burning me. What, what you doing, dad? 
He just laid there. We don't hear anything about him talking back to his father. It's, this is something. Verse 10 through 12, Abraham was committed all the way and had raised the knife when the angel of the Lord called out to him and said, stop, don't harm your son. So Abraham, was he was going to do it. I'm telling you, Isaac was as good as, as sacrifice when God first told him. Abraham just had a focused commitment to God. He had faith like none other. Faith, faithful father Abraham. So in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 through 19, uh, it reads, it was by faith that Abraham, and you can turn to it and read it in your own leisure. I'm going to read it to you. It said, by faith it was it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. So this is all a test. Did Abraham know it was a test? I'm not sure. if it, I don't think he knew. It, so I really, really felt he was doing what God told him to do and that he was going to have to sacrifice his son. But I also believe that he knew that God is so great and so awesome and so powerful. He gave me this son. He's going to resurrect him. Abraham who had received God's promises. And one of his promises that he was going to have a son, as well as all the, uh, the promises that his seed was going to be like the sand, sand of the sea and the stars of the sky, but he was going to have that many descendants. He's received all these promises and it's going to come through Isaac, but now God has told him to offer him up. But Abraham was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was also able to bring him back to life again. Now, this is what Hebrews is saying. So this goes along with even what, what we were thinking. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. And to me, I think they're saying this because, as I said, when God told Abraham to do it, Isaac was as good as, as good as sacrifice because he was just going through the motions, going to do what God told him to do. And it was a three days journey, you know, um, that they were going before God showed him where he wanted him to do it. They had walked for three days. So what was the purpose of this test? God says, now I know in verse 12, now I know that you truly fear God because you did not withhold even your only son from me. So the purpose of the test for God to know that Abraham, you love me so much that you are not going to withhold your only son from me. I know you love me. I know I picked the right man. 13 and 14 is God always provides what we need. Because after the angel stopped Abraham from killing, uh, from sacrificing his son, there was a ram caught in the bush and they were able to sacrifice the ram instead of Isaac. So, you know, and, and I know we've heard a lot of sermons about this, how there's a ram in the bush and it's still, it's true. God always provides. He always provides. He's always in the nick of time. He never, and you know, there's a song we sing, he may not come when you want him but he's always right on time. He might not even do it the way you want him to do it, the way you think he's going to do it, because our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. The way we plan it, God's got a totally different plan the way he wants to do it. So we can let him provide for us. We need to just let God provide the way he wants to provide. And here there was a ram caught in the bush. Abraham didn't know how God was going to provide, but God cause a ram to be caught in the bush so he could sacrifice that. Verse 15 and 16, this was the final test to see if Abraham was the right man to be the father of many nations. To see if he was the right man for God to start the line of his chosen people. Abraham's got a tremendous call on his life. And he ended up being the right man because he simply obeyed. Obedience is key here for us. We need to see that, that God is looking for obedience. God wants you to just be obedient to what he's leading you to do, what he's telling you to do. 
And 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 sometimes we, we try and make that too deep. It's not even as deep as we want to make it. Obedience in every single step of your life, in every aspect, whatever he's leading you to do, just do it. Just do it. I'm thinking about um, uh, Philip. I believe it was Philip that God told him to go join himself to a chariot. And when he joined himself to a chariot, I believe there was a um, a, a eunuch in there uh, that, was, that was reading the Bible because he didn't understand it. Philip was able to explain the Bible to him. Uh, he was the man that ended up getting saved. But what if Philip had said, why do you want me to join myself to this chariot? The man would never have been saved. The man would never have been baptized. So a lot of things God tell us to do, we need to just obey because we don't know the big picture. And God is so awesome. Uh, sometimes he's not going to even tell us all the details. He's not going to give you the big picture. Just take that step right in front of you. Just call your sister and uh, tell her how much you love her. Uh, just make it right with that loved one that you're upset about. And you, and you know when sometimes God keeps uh, speaking to you and he speaks to us by those little nudges, the thoughts you keep getting that you need to make that right. You need to call uh, bro Brother Bob. You need to call Brother Sister so-and-so. You need to make that right. And, and there are times when we ignore what God is asking us to do and unfortunately, sometimes it's too late uh, when we decide to call or we, or we find out, you know, okay, I'm going to go ahead and call. And you find out, well, the person went on to be with the Lord maybe a week before that. And, and, and then you beat yourself up because you know you were disobedient and you felt to call them. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Let's be more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And when he nudges us and he, he, he tugs on us, to do something, let's do it. Whether it's giving of ourselves, uh, calling somebody, uh, blessing somebody with something, whatever it is, uh, you know, where he might tell us to go visit someone, uh, whatever it is God's telling you to do. And you know what he's telling you because it doesn't leave you. It, it's like it's, it gnaws at you. It's, it's, it's like he's, put, you know, he nudges you. He, he lets you know when he's speaking to you. But Abraham was very obedient. And because he was obedient, he became Father Abraham. Um, and he said, I swear by my own name. He said, I will bless you. In the verse 15 through 18. He says, I will bless you because you're obedient. I will multiply your descendants beyond number like the stars in the sky and the sand of the sea. And that's us. We're his descendants. All the Christians everywhere are descendants of Abraham. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies. That is so awesome. Take that promise for yourself. You are descendants of Abraham. And God said, you're going to conquer the cities of your enemies. That means you're going to be victorious. You're not going to be defeated. Amen. You are a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. Through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And that's through us and, and mainly through Jesus Christ. Because we are, when Jesus came, uh, and, and, and died on the cross and gave his life, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed because now there's a way to God. There's the, the veil has been opened. The way has been made for us to get back to the Father. And then all of us are blessing the people on the earth when we share our testimony, when we share about Jesus Christ, when we share the gospel, when we, we win souls to Christ by simply uh, giving them our testimony. Amen. So the, the above part in verse 15 and 18 is part of the Abrahamic covenant. But I want you to notice that Abraham had to be obedient. And there was three major acts of his obedience uh, that we can see. And that is Abraham passed, had to pass three tests before God says, okay, that's enough. That's it. I'm sold out. This is the man I want to be the father of this nation. The first uh uh, act of obedience he had when God told him in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, he said, leave your country and your kindreds. Abraham had to leave everything he knew to follow God. And he did it. When God told him to do it, he did it. In uh, Genesis chapter 17, God told him to offer to, uh, that he had to be, this whole household had to be circumcised. Now, Abraham was 99 years old when God said, circumcise you and everybody in your household. So at 99, how many men would want to be circumcised at 99 years old? But he did it. When God told him, he moved on it and he did it. 
Abraham, so that, that second test, the first test, leave your country and your kindred. So leave everything you know. Uh, and before I give you this promise, Abraham left his country and his kindred. Circumcise your whole household. At 99 years old, he immediately did it. He circumcised every servant, everybody in his household. Now in Genesis 17, verse 23. And then the, this final test he gave him was offer up your son. In Genesis, where we are, Genesis 22. When he offered up his promised son, this was the final test that God was trying to see. Is this the man for the job? Is this the man that I want to start out this whole nation, this whole chosen generation? And with that final obedience, yes, he was. God knew that he loved him. And God swore by himself. And the Nelson study Bible says, when God took an oath, his, it meant his eternity guaranteed the fulfillment of his words. Because God is eternal. God is almighty. And if he tells you he's going to do something, you can take that to the bank. It's going to happen. Now, and something else you need to notice that verse 16 through 18 are the last words that God spoke to Abraham in the book of Genesis. Nothing else needs to be said. God has already seen Abraham is going to command his children. And he's going to do what I tell him to do because I've already tested him uh, as far as I need to test him. And I see that he loves me more than anything. And then say, Abraham went back to Beersheba in the land of the Philistines. Now, Abraham, uh, another uh, catch here is Abraham learns that his brother, Nahor, has eight sons. And this looks like a strange place for this, to put this talking about Nahor's children. But it talks about Nahor's children. And then it talks about uh, Rebekah, that uh, Rebekah was one of, uh, Nate was, came from Nahor. And Rebecca, you need to remember her because she is going to be the wife of Isaac, the son that he just had. So we're going to re read about that in chapter 24. But God has already worked out Isaac's future in birth and Rebecca. Uh, and she might not know it right now, but God has already planned for them to be together. So that's why that's put right here in this portion of the scripture to let you know Rebecca's origin, where she came from. And it just tells us that God has already worked out our lives. God has already has a plan for our life. Um, you know, even, even when I got married, God had a plan for my life. God had a plan for who I was supposed to marry, uh, that me and my husband were supposed to meet. And we've been together for 33 years. But God calls our paths to meet. And he calls us to fall in love with each other because we needed each other and he put us together. But God has a plan for your life. And he has that perfect one just for you. Doesn't mean you or him, or him is perfect, but you'll, he'll be perfect for you. Amen. So the application that we need to go from, to learn from this is the fact that obedience is better than sacrifice. And God gave Isaac to Abraham as his promise. God is going to test us just like he tested Abraham. With all these good gifts and these promises that he's given us, God wants us to love him more than the gift. And because he wants to love him more than the gift, sometimes he's going to require us to lay the gift down. And that seems like, okay, but God gave this to me. Yes, he gave it to you. And now he wants to see, do you love me more than this gift I gave you? Because it's just a gift. He gave it to you. But he wants us to be so submissive to him that we don't put anything before him. And, and that's anything. Um, some of the gifts that we're talking about, you, you know, you can have a gift of teaching. You can be a gift uh, prophetic. You can be an evangelist. You can be a pastor. All these gifts. You can be an apostle. You can be a musician. You can have the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift of hospitality. You can be an encourager, a server. Give. All of these gifts were given by God, and they're awesome gifts. But God does not want us to put anything before him. So I would even uh, admonish you, whatever your gift is, Remember that God is the gift giver. Remember that he gave it to you for his glory. And let's not get the big head. Because sometimes, you know, God gives us things and we forget where the gift came from. And we start taking God's glory. Oh, okay. But God has to keep reminding us and thank God that through his grace and mercy, he knows how to keep us humble. But the gift came from God and we need to give it back to God. So when God requires that gift, let's pass the test. Lord, I give it to you. I laid down everything that you gave to me. I give it back to you. Use it for your glory. You gave me this gift. Use it for your glory. Amen. And then God is glorified. And guess what? When you lay things down like that, 
God will just give it right back to you. Look what he did to I for Isaac, Abraham and Isaac. He laid his son down, his only son whom he loved, and God gave him right back to him. So sometime when God asks you to lay something down, it's just a temporary thing because he wants to see where your heart is. Is your heart with God? I love you more than anything. And I'm not going to put anything above you because God is a jealous God. Amen. Amen. So that's our lesson for today. Um, next week, we're going to be in chapter 23 and it's going to talk about how Sarah dies. But before I leave the channel, I just want to invite you um, to go on the same channel and there's a playlist. And on this playlist, there are two videos. One called The Sinner's Prayer, which is a short version where I explain why you need Jesus. And then the second one is a teaching about salvation, where I explain uh, and have all the scriptures explaining our salvation experience. So go on that uh, playlist, and they're, they're both of them on the same playlist to make it easy for you to find. And uh, turn your heart over to Jesus. Give your life to him today, because he's waiting for you. He's asking you to come. He's got outstretched arms. Amen. Time is now. Time is winding up. So we want to be in that ark of safety. Amen. So please go on that channel if you don't know God as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and accept him today. Amen. So let's just close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. I thank you for all those that are listening. I pray, Lord God, that you will prick the hearts, Lord God, of those that, that need to accept you, O oh God. Father, because I know it's not your will that any should perish. Lord, draw them to you, Lord God. We thank you for this training and this Bible study that we've had. We ask that you make your word real to us, O oh God. Father, we continue to give you back the gifts that you gave us. And we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I will see you next week.